Hey, so we're going to take a look today at how to start reading obfuscated code and how to understand it so you can study it. So we're going to use the Minecraft jar um, as our example because the Minecraft community um, has a very strong modding uh, community around it. Um, so here you see I'm, I'm playing a little bit of uh, Minecraft. Um, originally, I wanted to um, go in and mod the rate that seeds are dropped when you use the hoe tool there, but um, I kind of decided to do something a little bit more advanced. We're going to try to understand a little bit more about how and when mobs spawn. Um, so uh, here I'm, I'm going to find the Minecraft jar, which is in, the, um, in your app data folder on Windows um, under .minecraft bin and I'm using um, Java decompiler or JD GUI and opening up the Minecraft jar. And here on the left you see all these lovely obfuscated classes. Um, on the right they show up as perfect Java. So here we're just looking at some of the decompiled classes here. Um, and now um, you can see there are also uh, JD GUI will show you resources as well as of the latest version. Uh, it'll show you everything that's in the jar. So um, go to File, Save All Sources, and JD GUI will save all the Java files for you in a, in a nice handy zip file. I'm going to save it in my dev folder so we can uh, turn it into a Java project and start taking a look at the code. All right. I like to use IntelliJ. I think it's the, the best Java IDE, but uh, a lot of the same functionality you'll see me use is available in Eclipse or NetBeans, for example. So once you have your source zip, go ahead and unzip it. Um, when I open this up in IntelliJ, it will prefer that I have a source folder here, so I'm just going to rename this source. And then if I go in here, you'll see all those Java classes we were just looking at in the decompiler. Um, it's kind of strange that all these Java files are just in the root. Usually they're in a package, but because of the deobfuscation, it just dumps them all into one folder, but that's fine. So here in IntelliJ, I'm creating a new project from existing sources. And I'm going to specify the folder where I unzipped all the Minecraft Java source files. Use the source directory. It detected the um, source zip as a library. I'm just going to deselect that. And it's going to make one module. Uh, a module in Eclipse is the same as a project. So we're, ju we're just going to have one, one project or one module, and we're going to look at all the source code. IntelliJ does some indexing, so we get some nice help with code complete and syntax, syntax highlighting. And we're going to use a lot of uh, refactoring features, like renaming classes, renaming variables, and things. So um, basically, when you start to pick apart a obfuscated code, you want to look for the low-hanging fruit, and you want to um, find a lot of easy changes, uh, mark those, rename those classes, and then those will start to give you insight into the medium difficulty and so on, up until the, uh, the hard-to-interpret classes. So here's the first way to get started. Um, the, first, the first way to kind of figure out where to start is um, to look for strings, basically. So here I'm specifying a regular expression that says basically find any string that is in quotes. Um, that's of at least, we'll say, of length 10. Uh, that's a good place to start. So it's going to give us some good medium length strings, and hopefully we'll find something. So I specify a regular expression. I'm going to look in the whole project. We'll just limit it to Java files. And let's see what pops up. Okay, 
So we have a hit there. I'm going to expand everything. Okay, and let's see what we have. Pixels, resources, fail to add, size on disk. Okay, so we have some interesting stuff. Ah! Okay, jackpot. Okay, so these are describing game items. Entities, rainforest, seasonal forest. Okay, so this is great. We have a ton of stuff here. This is what I meant by low-hanging fruit. So um, anything that looks familiar, we can double-click on it, and we can start uh, renaming these variables in these classes based on these text hints that we're picking up. So this is all kinds of great places to start. The second way that you can go about uh, starting the deobfuscation process is um, simply by just searching for particular elements that you know about. <clears throat> My favorite enemy in the game is the creeper. And since I want to focus on um, learning more about the, the enemy AI, I'm just going to do a search for creeper and see what's reference, referencing this creeper ping. So here I got a hit right away. I could also just do a search for text creeper in the whole project, and we can see, see what we match. Just take off this and expand all results. OK, and we have a couple of great hits here mob.creeper that looks like a, a string ID, mob.creeper death. Uh, creeper, the name of a class. So this is a great place to start. We found something. It's definitely identifying this class as being the creeper. So we can go ahead and uh, rename it. Yep, you can see right here it's picking up the creeper ping. This is definitely the creeper monster. So I'm going to rename this. Since it's pointing to a ping, we know that this is going to represent the ping file name. So that's that's easy. See if there's any other low-hanging fruit. We see mob.creeper, random.fuse, which is probably that sound that it makes when it's about to blow you up. <laughs> mob.creeper death is probably a, like some sort of death-related tag. So we're going to rename this here. And don't be afraid to make mistakes or, or make guesses. If you find information later uh, that contradicts uh, names that you put in before, uh, you know, take take what you take the, take the new information that you learn and 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 incorporate it into what you know. You'll find that even really vague renaming can give you a lot of insight and help you take the next step in uncovering and kind of peeling away the layers of obfuscated code. OK, so we can just go ahead and rename this the Creeper class. All right, um, once you rename it, uh, pop into the, um, the Super class. OK, this is all red here. Let's see what's going on with that do. Do is a keyword. And the obfuscator has named this, this empty interface do, which is probably causing my IDE to mess up. So since it's empty, I'm just going to take it out. Yeah, that's much better. OK, so there's the creeper. It looks like <clears throat> there's a handful of other subclasses. All right, this is obviously the spider. OK. So this is probably the um, the uh, enemy mob base class. Yep, here's skeleton. Okay, so already we're making some good headway in uncovering which classes are related to the, the enemy mobs. Zombie. Yep. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and rename some of these. And you can see that that living ping file name variable that we renamed is in all of the... Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that IntelliJ would show you a little picture of the ping. That's awesome. Um, anyway, the living ping file name equals, and then it has that there. So um, every little renaming that you do is going to help you later on. Like here I 
I named that class Zombie 2, and Pig Zombie inherits from it, so that's a good hint. Yeah, so we can rename this like uh, Enemy Mob. There we go. So we go to Enemy Mobs base class, and we see we have a whole slew of other new mobs. Okay, sheep. So type this in. So this base class is probably the base class for all the friendly and enemy uh, monsters. Here, um, chicken extends unknown living. So I didn't when I named unknown living, I didn't know exactly what I did. I didn't have any hint for it. So now I have some additional information that unknown living is a base class for something else. So I can go to unknown living to I can see what else is subclassing it. Okay, so Unknown Living 2 is the base class for all of these friendly mobs. So this is probably a friendly mob base class. I'm just trying to walk you through my thought process as I go through and pick apart obfuscated code. Okay, we have creepers, enemy, friendly mob. We have one more guy here. Ah, uh, it's the squid. And squid extends unknown living one. Perfect. So we can rename this squid. And unknown living one base class is obviously uh, for friendly water mobs. So again, even vague, a uh, vague name like unknown living. Uh, later on helps us to figure out what its true purpose is. Okay, uh, YouTube limits me to uh, 15 minutes, so I'm going to continue this um, in the next video. Okay, I happen to know that char.ping is the player, so we're probably finding the player class. Oh, okay, there's a ghast. Okay, um, so I'll talk to you in the in part two of um, I'm trying to, uh, figuring out how to read obfuscated code.